Now I'm joined by Dr Sarah Jarvis and it's time for Talking Health. Now this section of the show is devoted to answering your questions so make sure you get them in and today we're discussing <clears throat> not a cough, how you can ease foot pain from common conditions such as plantar fasciitis and joint problems uh, with your toes. We're talking about uh, the causes of these aches and pains and what you can do to ease the symptoms. So if you have any questions, do give us a call and hopefully Dr Sarah will be able to answer them. Anything to do with your foot from your heel to your toe, we want to know. Uh, so first off, Sarah, what are some of the most common foot complaints? Well, I'm very impressed at the way you pronounced it because Thank it you. is we indeed did... plantar fasciitis. We did practice on the break. <laughs> Thank you. But that's undoubtedly the commonest one that I see in my clinic. So basically, it's a problem with your heel. So, oh, we did. We, we were going to have a Let's have a little look a at our demonstration. So on the bottom of your heel, you've got something called a fascia. And we know you've got ligaments, which, of course, connect bones to other bones across joints. We know you've got tendons which connect muscles to joints through as this tough connection. And then the fascia runs all the way along here from the bottom here to the front and basically does two things. Firstly, it holds all the bits together. It holds all those bones in place. And secondly, it's acting as a shock absorber. So that's one of the most common. One of the other ones that I see a lot of is something called Morton's neuroma. Now, if you look here, these long bones are called your metatarsals and they're the equivalent to the bones that you've got in the back of your hand. They are your midfoot. So, sorry, your forefoot. So they connect to there and between them, there are nerves that run along them. Now, a digit is a finger or a toe. So the plantar aspect is the base of your foot, the sole of your foot. So the plantar digital nerve basically runs between these and it supplies the bottom of your foot and that can get squashed particularly along here and that can feel as if you're walking on a stone or it can be a shooting pain that goes right into your toe those are two of the most common then of course we've got gout mm -hmm. which can affect any part of your body but mostly affects that bottom joint there at the mm -hmm. base of your big toe and bunions and bunions and bunions absolutely excruciating pain from gout but bunions that's where instead of being fairly straight your toe ends up like that and it's actually got the the rather unattractive name hallux valgus so in other words it sounds a bit vulgar to me but basically it's where things come out now you'll be delighted to hear that it's not all down to those high heels i keep giving Thank you a hard time about for that. <laughs> it's actually thought to be genetic although the bad news is that actually wearing high heels and tight heels particularly ones that go in at the front can make pain and bunions worse and they can also make you more prone to that morton's neuroma which is in there well wonderfully presented come and take a seat uh, so let's start with the plant of uh, fasciitis, fasciitis. Thank you very much, uh, because that is the most common. Are there any sort of stretches and exercises that oh, we yes. can do? There are loads of stretches and exercises that you can do. So basically what we've got... I have made you get up again. Uh, you so have, sorry. and that's fine. It's good for me. <laughs> exercise is good for me. So basically what we've got here is the plantar fascia. You get the pain just here, and it's often worse just after you get up in the morning when you first step on it. And it may get better as it eases up during the day. And it's often because your Achilles tendon, which goes up into your calf, is very tight. So what we're trying to do is to straighten that out, to strengthen that out. Now, one of the things you can do is if you've got pain, you can use this very expensive gizmo and you switch, you, you, hold on. you just switch it on there if it works. There you go. And it's vibrating away and you can just run it over that or alternatively, you could use the cheap option. And the cheap option is a bottle of water, uh -huh. which has been put in the freezer overnight and filled with ice. Now, ideally, it shouldn't have ridges on it. But what you do, all you do in the morning, you put it on the floor, you put a tea towel over it, and then you roll the arch of your foot over it, putting about half your weight onto that. And then you shift over that way and that way so that you're opening up and loosening up all the fascia in every direction. Do that for one to two minutes. And the other side, if you've got the pain, job done in terms of, re of reducing the pain. And you put it in the freezer so that it's ice. Is that to, to decrease the inflammation? So it's cold will reduce the inflammation, but don't put that directly onto your, onto your foot. Then in terms of the stretches that you need to do, as I said, you're trying to loosen up this bit right at the back here. So what we do first, she says, proving how short she is. First thing you're going to do is start at the top. You want to loosen up start with here you're going to feel the stretch here put both hands here both feet there against the wall or against the table and then you're going to put this right foot back 
and you're going to press back on it, keeping your heel to the ground, and then you're going to bend your front knee forward to extend that stretch. And you ought to be feeling that stretch in your calf. You hold that for about 20 seconds. You do that about three times on either side and you repeat that two or three times a day. Next one, equally easy. Just this time, you're gonna be using the right foot slightly in front of your left foot and you're gonna be stretching the front foot. And what you're trying to do is to bend forward, keeping that foot as flat on the ground as you can, as far forward as you can. And that time, you should feel the stretch, not in the top, you should feel it underneath here. And that's stretching the next set of muscles, which is your soleus muscle. Then you're moving one bit further down. Oh, there's lots you with can my, do. Oh, yes. You okay, stand well, on the edge really of a step. You can see it on the camera, but oh, there is a box. There is a step. There is a black box here. And you'd want to have something to hold on to, very importantly. Just pop your heels over the edge and then just gradually put your ankles down like that. So if you didn't have a, a, an invisible black box at home, you could just do it in the stairs. On the stairs, yeah. but hold on to the banisters while you're doing it. And you can, if you want to, just increase the work on that just by doing it with just one foot. And you should be feeling the stretch all the way up from there as you're doing it. And then finally, my very expensive home, brought from home, because I use these on a daily basis, resistance bands, fantastic, really easy, really cheap. I mean, you know, this. I think this whole lot comes in five different strengths so that's the extra heavy this one's the extra light i tend to use the yellow one which is for my arms because that's a medium strength and then i'll use this red one for my foot and what i'm going to do is sit on a chair i'm going to put the resistance band underneath my foot the ball of the foot, not the bottom. But up. then you need to be on the floor, actually, because the, the stool's too high. We've, we've fallen at the last hurdle. <laughs> but you'd have your foot on the floor, and then you're using that band to point I your toe up as far as you can. And then to make it more, you're going to straighten your leg to do it. And basically, all you're doing is try to increase that stretch. See, the amount Simple. of people that skip the stretching at yeah. the gym, and I always think it's fundamental. Absolutely. Uh, but we're going to take some of your calls now. Apparently, there's a lot of feet problems in the nation. We'll speak to Claudia from London first. What's the problem with your foot, Claudia? Hello. In July, I had an accident, and I crushed my whole of my ankle. Um, I had to have it rebuilt, and it had plates and screws and bones in it. Um, it every day it hurts. I'm, I'm walking, and it's painful. Will it ever get better or should I have the screws taken out? Because they said eventually they could take the screws out, but I didn't really want to go for another operation. So, Claudia, I think the chances are that it's not the screws that are causing the pain. You will have a lot of scar tissue there. What I would strongly suggest is you get yourself referred to a physiotherapist. But the other person for foot problems, absolutely invaluable, is a podiatrist. Now, podiatrists are very underused resources and they may well be able to fit you, for instance, with an insole or with something to support your foot, a heel support, exactly. Like Here's this. one I prepared earlier, very blue Peter. Um, that, but, but ones which are specially prepared for you by podiatrists are best. Um, and I would suggest that they may well be able to help you with that. But I think a physiotherapist, in time, you may find that getting the screws re um, removed is a good thing, but you certainly don't want to do it too quickly. I hope okay. that helped, Claudia. Thank you very much. Do you know, I actually just recently bought one of these, not because I needed it for my feet, but because my shoes were too big, so I thought this would help. And they are delicious to wear. I mean, they yeah. feel so comfortable. They are, and of course, they're very good. What, you, what we're seeing there is they are increasing your arch mm. because if you've got flat feet, and unfortunately, that's what fallen arches are, it can cause pain all over your foot. So actually having that up there, having a proper, proper support. support in there really can make a difference.